Okay, good evening to all of you. So this is our third uh, segment uh, of Business Talks. Actually, we don't have a name for this program. We should, so comment below if you, if you uh, have some suggestions uh, for a name for this show. So it's all about businesses. We try to uh, add value and give value uh, to our business community. So today we have a special guest. Uh, this is Neil Whitehead. Uh, personally, he has helped me a lot, mentored me uh, and our company, and helped us uh, uh, build strategies, basically, for our company. And um, he has worked with a lot of startups, worked with a lot of companies, uh, helping them. You know, thinking creative is really important for a company. Even if you're a startup, uh, say you, you have a gigantic company and you're the CEO, still, creative thinking is essential, as Neil will explain later on. So he has worked with a lot of these companies from small to medium size to large companies. So we'll ask Neil uh, as to what he has done before and uh, let's start off with uh, Neil introducing himself. So Neil, thank you for coming today. Pleasure. And uh, it's up to you, over to you. Okay. So um, I started my career in a traditional way uh, at Kingston University um, doing architecture. Um, I was fortunate in so far as that Kingston for me was a, was a revelation. It was a very creative college, a, a very quick story. First day in, 24 of us were asked to go around Kingston and then come back and express what we saw. I did great big screens with multi-layering of water and inks and stuff like that because the Thames was the centre of Kingston. Picked on that. Other guys counted the number of cigarette ends in the, in, in the gutter because that's what they fancied doing. But what it showed you is how creative people and how you can look at a problem in many different ways. So that was the start of my career. The second step is you qualify and leave, and then you end up doing uh, toilet details and you know all sorts of sort of um, hidden panel details and so on and so forth. Not very exciting, not very innovative, but you have to do it in, in, in your profession. And then I left, worked for a number of companies, and, and then joined um, a company called Fitch. And Fitch was phenomenal because they understood the power of design. They understood the power of creative thought and individuality. So we used to work very hard with some of the household names of Ford Motor Company, Virgin, BNP Paribas, O2, to name but a few, in creating brands and positioning them. And it was complex because it brings together how our social environment's working, how our consumers are reacting to things, and you've got to be really, really open-minded and very innovative, and also to creatively direct divergent people to put things together. So as a result of that, we started to develop quite a lot of techniques and so on and so forth. But what became a real issue is that Unfortunately, we humans um, are pack animals, and as pack animals, we like to be liked. So what we do is we always default to a common denominator that everybody gets and likes it. So you can try it at home. Sit around the table with your mum and dad and brothers and sisters, put an idea on the table, and I can guarantee you if it's an extreme idea, they will not they will not get it. They will say, well, it won't work for this reason. It won't work for that. You know, I don't like that. I, I don't like technology. I don't like this or whatever. Because you're throwing to them a completely new idea that's alien to their current world that they're in. And that was something that was the big issue when we were working with clients. We'd go and huddle. We'd put together what we thought were absolutely amazing <coughs> concepts. We'd go and show it to the board. And again, they defaulted to the common, you know, the, the common denominator and said, oh, well, that's a great idea, I really like that, but could you just paint it a bit green and do it as we're doing it at the moment? So it became absolutely clear that we had to move on and develop. And so the techniques I'm going to share with you in, in a little bit later on, these are the techniques we've done where you bring people along collectively, you bring your pack with you, and then when you're making your decisions, you're so much further in the world of imagination that people think it's the norm. norm. So you're getting them in a way to default to a much higher position without them really knowing it. So that's what we're going to do. The story I love the most is the story, just to, sh to share this with you, is the story to do with Kodak. So Kodak uh, in the 90s and so on and so forth was one of the biggest companies in the world. You know, They ruled the world with regard to film, photography, and sharing your moments with the Kodak brand. That's what they did. And one day, a really smart guy had 
gone out and he developed a digital camera that he thought was great and he brought it to the board meeting and he sat around and he said I've got a great new product and it's a digital camera and I think this is the future of what we're doing. Clearly that was in conflict with film and so the board rejected it. So the poor little fella went off with his head low, went away and put it in a, in a safe and it was, it was hidden. He happened to meet a guy called Steve Jobs at a trade fair and he happened to talk to him about this, um, this digital camera and Steve Jobs employed him and the first product meeting he had in Apple, a product manager said, why don't we put a digital camera in an iPhone or a phone as it was then and of course Kodak no longer exists in the form that it did then. That's my point about you know, getting caught and stuck um, in, in, in not moving with the times or bringing people with you, okay? However, what I would say, if you uh, go in a little bit, because if you're going to be creative, one of the things that's really important is we, we live in a world, and we are here today, and we're here today because history has happened in the past, and things have developed in the way that they are. And so, therefore, we need to be completely aware of and read and look and everything else, explore exactly what the past has been. We have to also think, and it's the most important thing, is think about customers. It's more complicated today than at any other time where we have so many generations living together, from the baby boomers that like everything to be non-technological, terra firma, to um, Generation uh, X, which is all about the Berners-Lee um, you know, uh, stuff on um, with the internet, and they, they check everything. So the thing I use as an example, if I go at home, um, to some of my family members, uh, Everest is 27,000 meters. They'll look it up on, on the internet and come back and tell me, no, it's not, it's 27,000 meters, 150. You know, it's, it's that level of detail that they're doing. And you need to understand that when you're developing products and, 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 and selling uh, ideas to, to businesses. And then, of course, we've got the millennials, which is very much more about you know, shorter attention spans, YouTube, things and then we've got snowflakes coming through and, and Y's and Z's. So we're living in a world that is really complex and I will do an exercise with you that whenever you are doing a business idea you must focus on the world around you and the people that are around you and how you communicate to them. So that's really important. Another thing that you need to really think about is um, you know if you have a business plan and a business idea whatever it may be in you've got to do a lot of research and thinking about direct competitors so people that are you know, directly against your brand, so if it's Nike, it's Adidas or whatever, and then indirect competitors. So in the case we're in today is Andy Murray's just launched a, a new product called AMC. That's a new product coming into the market. So you have to be aware of these trends that are going on and what's happening, which is fascinating, makes your life rich, and you've got lots to talk about when you're out in the evening with all your mates. Um, you also need to build a very strong idea around what your business is, how you're going to sell it to the customers, what's going on and so on and so forth. And what we need to do and what I'm going to share with you is a whole load of games that enable you to have a collective master vision. That's the most important thing that we, we need to do. Okay? So, what are these, these exercises we're going to do? Um, just to give you a flavor, just to give you an absolute flavor, the first thing we're going to do is obviously focus in on the, the consumer. Um, the way that we do this, um, and I'll tell you a little, a little narrative about it, is we use cards um, of different types of segments in the market, different age groups, dif different social economic backgrounds, and different things that are going on. And then we work with the team to work out who the customers we, we want. Very quick story, when I was working with Yvel, we were sitting um, in, the, um, in the boardroom, we had the board of directors, and I asked them to bring the staff in from the sales floor. They right. came in, and we started going through who all the customers were. The directors, of course, they believed they knew who it was. They'd seen all the reports, seen all the statistics. They thought it was a 75-year-old person who went on a Tuesday and bought plants and a few Nixon next, Nick, Nixon next as well. And then when we then asked the, the girls that worked behind the counter, they went, no, 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 it's none of that. 
what happens is you have a mum who's about 45, and she comes with her daughter who's about 25, 35. They shop together, but the daughter wants trendy stuff and things for pets and children and all that sort of stuff, and mum buys more traditional things. So that transformed the way that we redesigned the whole store and organized it, and sales and you know, commerce rose by 20 or 30% just from that one observation. So you have to be very, very careful about that. The other thing I want to, sp to spend some time with you is in this area here, which is creating brands. So if you've got an idea of, of, of um, exactly what your business is, how you want to develop it, I'm going to teach you some games to, to play with the people that are going to be part of your business and, and who are going to help you to build a brand and, and build a narrative around how that works. And it's, in effect, imagining that the brand is a person, and then imagining how, it, how, how he or she looks, um, how he or she thinks, how he or she talks, and also what the essence of that brand is. And it's a really important part, because without brand narrative, you can't brief your creative guys, you can't do your advertising, you can't uh, tell your, your, your parents exactly you know, what it is that you're trying to do. So design is the powerful tool that once we do these things in the right way, we'll drive those things in the right direction, okay? And ultimately, what you're trying to do, and again, we're not gonna be do, the, do all of this today, I'm just gonna give you some stuff to play with and, and, and work on, is what, you're gonna, what we're gonna try and do is build a master vision um, using image and creating a direction that we believe is the right way to go, which is the first step of getting the, the plan in place, all right? So you get your plan in place, which is what we're working on today. You develop into a brief, which is where you allocate that out to members of your team, and you also give it out to creative people of different types. You know, some will be doing internet for you, some will be doing graphics, some will be doing logos, some will be designing stores for you or equipment. And then that goes through to execution. And the most important thing in the world we live in is execution. Without execution, it's all hypothetical. And then you reevaluate, and then you start again. So we're, we're in a business now, which is a, a streaming business. We've talked about it. It's grown in a completely different way to when we started our conversations the first day because we we're open-minded and we explored it. But we've come through the journey. So for us, it is what it is. And that's, that's where the power in what Indeed. we're doing is, is all about. So that's my introduction. Um, what I just want you to do for a few minutes while we just take a chill out. I want you to take the, this brand here, O2. It's, it's a brand that I worked on when it was launched some time ago. And I want you to just think about what you think that brand is communicating to you um, and anybody else that's around you. So taking it as a, as a, as a mark, you can see the colors. You can see why is the name O2? Why is the store looking like it is? And try and think about it, about how it looks. So does it look young? Does it look energetic? Does it look effervescent? Does it look uh, uh, essential? Um, does it, how does it think? You know, is it about communication? Is it about youth? Is it about O2, which is uh, you know, an events place? Is it about events? How does it talk? Is it bubbly, etc.? And what's the essence of the brand? Because if you have an idea in your mind, and you're watching us now, this is really the end result of a journey that we went along along the way. And then I will, for the next session, we'll take you through a number of these, these exercises. Okay. Right. Perfect. And the other thing I wanted to tell you uh, uh, was uh, you can actually ask questions from yeah, us. Please. And Neil would... Uh, more, uh, the more the merrier, please. Exactly. So yeah. we want to make it as interactive as possible. Yeah. Uh, so for now, we are going to go uh, for a short break. And we'll be back... Uh, in two, three minutes, Good. till you think about those. And you come back with loads of ideas and loads of questions. And just Indeed. send them through, and then we'll. Uh, yes, you can we'll uh, type it in. We'll praise And you. we'll get it over here. Okay. So, yeah.
Okay, uh, welcome back to the show. And now Neil's going to uh, give you some more examples yeah. of this, uh, of, of how creative thinking would uh, change uh, businesses uh, and could help businesses. So Neil, over okay. to you. But just to connect it, the thing that I asked you to do was to think about what O2 was, and because of the fact that you have to type and all that sort of stuff, it's a bit difficult. So I will give you what it what it was about. The way it looked was it was a, it was useful, energetic. Um, the idea was O2, which is the essence of life. Therefore, oxygen is the essence of life. Therefore, communication would also follow in the same suit. Um, the whole thing about the the way it talked was about entertainment, about bringing people together, communication, um, talking about personal life and business life, um, and the way that it thought was all about originality. And at the time, you have to understand that the, the, the best thing in the market at that time was phones for you, and maybe, maybe Vodafone, and all they sold was phones. They didn't really sell the experience of phones, and they were certainly not aware of what was going to happen with cloud industries that were around the corner. And the, the idea is that it's a, it's, a, it's a big blue tank that we put in a studio, and then we drop bricks and we put different sorts of uh, uh, air through it so that you had different uh, languages that came out in the water, and then that reflected itself into all of the, the literature and all the stuff that we produced for the brand and then designed all the stores. So that's creative thinking. Just very, very quickly, um, to give you the essence of what we're trying to, to achieve here before we go into the exercises. If you look at this project that we have here called Boom Burger, <coughs> this was founded by some, some young, highly energetic, highly creative guys um, whose grandmother, one of, one of them, whose grandmother lived in Jamaica and she was brilliant at conjuring up all the old recipes that were around that were quite spicy and quite hot. And so this is a, 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 a burger bar in, uh, in, in uh, Notting Hill Gate and Labrook Grove and around those areas. But because of the spice and because it was an original recipe, the idea we came up with was with Boom Burger. And then you can see that the whole idea was about this exploding, the, the taste of things happening in your mouth and exploding in a really, really big way. And you can see the colors are sort of quite nationalistic. They're quite Jamaican. So that was, uh, that was definitely... Um, what we did there. Patara here is a fantastic guy from uh, Venezuela. He's one of the students that we had here, or one of the startup companies, part of the, uh, the GES scheme here. He is now doing extremely well, and the idea there is that it's food for the favela, and the favela is where the poor people live, but it's all energetic, high food, high entertainment, parties, and also the food he produces, Venezuelan families have on a, on a Sunday afternoon. Um, and he's got a place in Canada Wharf, he's got a place in Camden, he's got a place in Covent Garden, and he is doing extremely well. And in fact, I'm seeing him tomorrow as a catch-up. I, I met him as well. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's, he's, well, I call him amazing. Rocky, but he's a, right. he's a top, top, top guy. <laughs> um, and then again here you can see various things that we did with Hunger Dogs, which was um, you know, traditional hot dogs. Everybody knows about hot dogs. Um, and so we, we basically created with street art, something behind that. And then we did a, a, a pizza place which was called um, uh, Bibu, which is basically the sound. If you go to Italy or Rome, all you hear is car horns all the time. And so mm -hmm. that's the name that we came up with that. And of course, um, this, this Italian restaurant here we call Ciao. I mean, why would we not? You know, because it's friendly. Um, so what I'm, I'm going to do is um, I've showed you some examples there of how, how that works. But what I want to do is show you the way that we got there. So all of these projects, whether it's working for one of the biggest brands in the world to a startup pop-up or starting with you know, something here at the university, um, the, the key to it all is the, the, the process that you go in. Otherwise, you don't get buy-in. And not only that, you don't get the original angles on what will make this a unique piece of branding and communication. So based on, on that, um, if I can get to the, where I want to get, yeah, hang on, just give me a second. You're going to see all these things come up in front of you. Right, so let's go. <coughs> so what, what I'm, the, the, the first thing that we must all do, and I did touch upon it in my introduction, the first thing is you've really got to be in tune with what's happening in the world. One of the exercises that I do when I get a group of people together, it can change depending on what the product is. This is asking them how they've seen the cloud industries develop. So 
that's what I'm, I'm doing with this particular exercise. Um, I get all of you guys to then sit down and, and work it through as groups because it's about interaction. You have to talk to each other. You have to communicate in the right way. That is creativity. It's not about it coming out of a little box in the corner of the room. And then you explore the whole idea from, you know, when the South American Indians used to send smoke signals right the way through to pigeons, to the early exchanges that took place, the big mobile phones that were around in the 70s, going all the way through to the, 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 the G5 network. But of course, it's now moving on. So Analytica is coming through, AI, machine learning, uh, subscription economies, all of those things are really important. And all I will say is it's your responsibility as a human being to be aware of what's going on in the world. So you must always be looking, always talking, always seeing where you think the next things are going. Because every time you do that, there's, I had a, a conversation with a taxi driver in Newcastle this morning about eco cars and about hybrid versus battery versus the future of the planet, plastic. You know, this guy is completely and utterly immersed in, 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 the, in, the, in the saving of the planet. And I think that's what we must all be doing in our, in our work and the way we think, okay? We also have to explore all the new technologies, you know, that are around. What's about? What's affecting us? What are they going to do to the rest of the world? So we've got AI, which is transforming the world. Now, as I walk around and I arrive in Newcastle, it, it picks out the restaurants I want to go to, what places I want to do. I mean, it, it's really moving on. It's not just enough to arrive and contact someone. Machine learning, again, this is all technology that is finding ways to hold data and work in the right way. 3D printing, you know, data management of big businesses. Uh, clouds will affect and are affecting the way we work. We're more hybrid. We can work in different parts of the world. VR, which is very important. Virtual reality is the next big platform coming through. Write this down. VR chat, go and look it up. And, uh, and discourse is another platform that you should look at because it's a whole new world of avatars, different environments, and connecting people together around the world. All highly, highly fascinating. And yet on the other side, you know, we've got projects where someone's eating a boom burger in Labrook Grove, but they're all interconnecting in the way that they're doing it. So that's the other thing. Now, the other thing that's fascinating, I love all of this stuff, is that we've got consumers. And I want you guys in a moment to sort of just think about, and if you can, maybe just type down some stuff that you see. So let's try and be interactive, even though it's not face to face. But one of the things, this was by a top psychologist when I was doing some work with EE, and he came and did a talk to us, and he gave us a perception of what he thought the current world is at the moment with the millennials. That's moving on now because the snowflakes are coming through, the Zeds are coming through, it's all changing. Yeah. And what he was talking about is that it's a very narcissistic environment we're in. So there was a time you went to a venue to have good time, now it's about going to a venue and taking a picture of yourself in that venue. So it's very, very narcissistic in the way that it's Completely working. Different, isn't it? And uh, it's just the way it is. I was on the plane today and the guy was taking selfies of him and his girlfriend, you know, <laughs> cutting across <laughs> me, I you, God help me, all the rest of it. And then you have to look at why some brands are working. And I can go on forever on this, but the, Uber's a good one. Uber for five pounds, you go into a Mercedes car, you feel like a king, you and your girlfriend or you and your wife or you and your boyfriend, you off you go and you have a nice meal and, and all the rest of it. But the technology tells you where the car is, what time it's going to pick you up, what the name of the driver is. I know it's not such a good brand at the moment because they've lost their license for a number yes. of reasons. But the principle is, is putting the technology together with the experience, you know, and I can then Indeed. do Fitbit would be another one I would pick up. And there are many other brands that, that reflect this and, and it's the bringing together of technology and stuff like that. Now then, what I want you to do, if you can, and let's just try it rather than falling asleep at your computer, why don't you just write down very, very quickly what you think are key characteristics of millennials, okay? So what do you think they're, they're about? What do, you, what do you think their attention span is like? What do you think they like doing? What do you think um, their hobbies are? Just, just if you can, um, send through as quickly as you can just quick things of what you think are characteristics of millennials and I'll go quiet for a little while while you think about it. So the thing is we have quite a few questions from uh, Julieta and uh, she says that she has some issues typing in the questions on uh, YouTube so if you do have some issues you can um, uh, send it through uh, 
uh, Facebook, we have our Facebook page uh, or our Instagram page. So she has sent us some questions actually. Good. Uh, one is, do how do you track your creativity? Can you track your creativity, or is there a way? No, I if think so, I think what creativity. Is, this is the the, the the point I'm making really. Um, it's it's to set the environment up in a way that you can be not. Uh, you, you don't default to, to, to the, the lowest common denominator. So what we're doing here is by thinking about the consumer, thinking about the world we live in, then thinking about the brands that you're building, it gives everybody a chance to input on it, because we're all different. You know, some people are very analytical, some people are very, uh, uh, you know, are very academic, some people are slightly scatty with sort of wild ideas. You need, to you need to enhance all of that. But the, the, the real thing about creativity is giving yourself the freedom and not being worried about whether somebody thinks it's a good idea or a bad idea. For me, everything's a good idea. And you can work it and you can move it. Yeah. So, so the thing is not having fear about having ideas, but bring people with you. Otherwise, the minute you put a really good idea on the table, like the guy for Kodak, who went in with a digital camera that now is stormed the world, he was put down. No, that won't work. It's not right. And the reason being, they were frightened. Everybody was frightened. So the one thing about creativity is don't be frightened. Right. You know, uh, talking about creativity and uh, the point that you made, uh, you know, recently I've got a chance to speak to some students about uh, how to develop businesses and how, what my journey was like. And one thing that I, that I really, uh, one exp example that I uh, said was, uh, everyone's creative. All, every idea is unique, right? Uh, every idea is a good idea, but not every idea is a good business idea. Yeah. So what do you think about that, Neil? Like, people can come up with loads and loads of ideas, but it wouldn't be a really good business idea. How can you, like, differentiate whether, okay, is this a good idea? Yeah. Or, you know, how can we, like, I, I think the first point is your advice was brilliant because I think every idea is a good idea. You should never worry about it. The, the, the really, the, the, to be honest with you, right. any idea that you can execute and you can go to a market stall and sell a hot dog or you go to a market stall and sell a, you know, a product that you're making, whether it's a cosmetic product or whatever, that for me is success. And for some reason, people in academia and people in life are frightened of being <coughs> tested. So I think the only way you really prove an idea is you go and try it. And believe you right. me, I've done loads of ideas that have failed, and I've had a few that have gone really well, and we've helped some businesses be very, very successful, and some people won't go that far, so they've, they've, they've stagnated. So I would say, taking into account, working out who it is that you're trying to sell to, how you can sell, the minute you get a pound in your hand for yeah. an idea, it's amazing. Like you, if you get a client who comes, and wants his business to be streamed, and he pays you a few pounds for doing it. Right. You've won, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And, and when we started, that wasn't quite the journey we were we were thinking of. Exactly. So, like. And, yeah. and I think also be flexible. If it, you know something doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. It's just don't have to go down that road again. Yeah. Right. And we have more questions uh, from Juliet as well. Good. Uh, before that. Uh, Shall we go for another break, yeah. Neil? Okay. Yes, we, we, yes. Yes, so let's go for another break. And, and I, will come, I, will, I will think about the idea and we'll come straight back and then, yeah. and then we'll move on because we're on tight, tight time spans and then give you some tools to play with. Exactly, okay. and we'll try to answer as much as your questions as possible. Okay. See you in a minute.
Okay, welcome back, guys. So we have more questions coming in. Uh, so Julieta, thank you for all the questions. She's like, um, there are so many questions that uh, we'll try to answer everything. Uh, so, so one question that she wants to she asks asked was, do you believe creative people are born as such, or it's something that can be taught? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a massive debate, isn't it? In terms of, of, of that, my my honest my honest belief is every human being is creative. Every human being has an ability to do something that is out of the ordinary, whether it's music or decorating or paint or, or just sociability. So many things. So I'm a great believer. We all have creativity, but what happens to us when we're at school? is the default comes into place, and if you don't draw brilliantly, then you're not creative. I can tell you now, I've met more, creati more creative people than you can believe who can't draw, you know. Um, Steve Jobs can't draw, that's why he had Ives in there doing it. You know, it, it's not about the misconception of drawing, it's about the misconception of seeing something in a different way and having the courage <coughs> to stand by it and, and, and make a statement on it. And, and where it's the best thing to do, of course, because all of those guys were ridiculed. All of them, you know, Jobs was ridiculed. Um, you know, the, the Gates was ridiculed. They, they were all ridiculed when they started. Tesla still is being ridiculed because of his space travel. Oh yeah. But, but these guys, they 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 go on. So I think it's about belief, and I think everybody has a has has a, a creative opportunity. And uh, adding to this uh, particular point that you made, uh, now I remember when we started this uh, process and uh, me and our uh, director was talking about this whole concept and I was telling you about this and you were like, oh, yeah, just go for it, it's a brilliant idea. And then some people were like, it's not gonna work, right? And everyone will have their own thoughts. That's right. So let's say that we get a lot of negative feedback. Mm -hmm. So how can we know, how do we know that uh, this is a brilliant idea? Like, there's, only, there's only one way you can do it, execute it. So you just go out there and you execute it. And the thing that is the, the, the best thing in the world is if you fail, don't look at it as a slap on the wrist. Just go, right, okay, that didn't work. I'm now going down another road, you know? And, and I think it's about tenacity, getting up, trying it again, trying something else. You know, none of these businesses, man, none of these businesses are automatic successes. So it's about real belief that you can do it and also embrace when someone goes actually I don't think that works and you, know, you go you know what yeah you're not right but if we did that or we did this then we could really go somewhere and, and get this to work so I think it's about tenacity and execution execution that's really important yeah. isn't it yeah and uh, there's actually more <laughs> uh, so right uh, so how can one take a step back from technology such as social media without feeling left left out, and still in uh, enhancing businesses as social media is a great form of creativity, but can sometimes be draining. So it's more like a thought that uh, she says. I, so I, I'll make an answer on that. What, what I think's happened is is when social media started, it gave access to billions of people. There weren't so many people on it, so you had a lot of success on it. It's saturated now. I mean, I get absolutely inundated with stuff coming at me from, from all sides of the thing. Then YouTube came along, and that was, that was refreshing. There was a few of those out there, and that was the way. Again, it's got absolutely, you know, there's just millions of things there. The thing that's really cool at the moment is streaming. Why? Because you get people like me who can come and talk to you for an hour and, and discuss all the things and all the projects that I've been involved in. You can interact with me, and we can then continue later on on another session or you know you pick up what you need to do I mean it's fantastic so I think this is the next the next area that, that's going on so what I think is happening with social media is I think trying to get people to communicate across the planet is almost impossible uh, VR chat for sure is a, a way of doing it with avatar go on it I've been on it done it all that sort of stuff blow your mind because it's you meet the most amazing avatars um, which I like by the way but what I think is a social media's game now is to get people from social media to go and meet to go and interact physically so I think the game is about creating physical environment physical experience from social media taking you there and getting you excited in it because I think that's 
where the world is moving to. Right. Uh, those are the questions uh, uh, up until now. And uh, adding to this point, and I would like to uh, say, Neil, like when I was in this process, you know, you gave me so much of ideas about enabling this creative thinking process. Yeah. Like there were some activities that you suggested and yeah. we both were, you know, doing these activities together, which really helped me. Yeah. Because then you think about the business or think about the uh, strategies in a different way, a completely different angle, yeah. uh, I would say. So do you have any, um, you know, like activities that you want to share with us or audience uh, as to how we can enable this? this? Yeah, I, what, what I'll do is just, there is, as you know, there are, right. there are ways of doing it. I'm, <coughs> I'm just going to, um, very quickly, because if, you can, if you've got a pen at home, you know, or take a screenshot of what you can see on the, on the camera, um, I'm just going to quickly show you how that works. What, what I have here on the screen, you've already, I've talked to you about it, in terms of creating your own brand and how it looks and how it thinks. What you have to do is whatever market you're going in, whether it's a hot dog market, a beef burger market, a new digital product, um, whatever it may be, you have to write a list of what you think are who are competitors. And you also have to be incredibly imaginative and you have to think who is, a, you know, is an indirect competitor in that market, someone that is on the horizon who you know, might, might dominate in, in, in the future. And you have to do the same with all of their brands. So you, and I did that with you. So we actually yes. looked at who the competitors were. Uh, quite frankly, is one that does it. There's quite a few others that we looked at. Right. Some of them are a little bit old hat. Some of them are modern. But you've got to think about them as a brand and how they're communicating. Because what we're doing is we're in the world of individuality. And I have done this a million times in my life. And whenever we do clusters based on, a, on an axis, you know, academics here will understand what's going on, whether it's to do with customer service, 10 to 0, whether it's to do with price, 10 to 0, or, or hopefully you can find some more, more exciting things to do. Most of the time, because we, are, we all go to a lowest common denominator the, and, the, and the default, what you'll notice is all the fashion brands <laughs> sit in the same place. You know, all the, all, the, all the streaming companies sit in the same place. You know, all of the computer companies, HP and all of those guys, sit in the same place. Right. So you have to find a way that you sit in a different place by having a different value system and something that's going on. So that's right. where academia fits with intuition. Okay, so, so that's an important thing. The, the next task is this whole idea of creating a master vision. Okay, so in America, what they do in, uh, in America is they, when they're selling a movie, they turn up and they say, oh, I've got... Um, uh, I've, got, I've got this idea for a movie and it's a, it's a combination of this movie and that movie, this blockbuster and that blockbuster and that's how it works. And again, because the people with the money are looking at it, their default position is there's two films that have been successful and they're yeah. coming together. Well, of course, that's going to be successful, isn't it? They're slightly missing the point because things like Bandersnatch, which you may have seen or you may not, but look it up, Bandersnatch is going to smash the world of of movies because right. you can go through a film in different directions so it goes like the guy's going to jump off the balcony uh, and what's the storyline on that so the whole storyline is being made up on that and the guy's going to remain on the balcony and there's going to be a whole storyline going on there so can you imagine the dynamics that could start to come in mm -hmm. you try and sell that to two money men who want to put two blockbusters together jaws and whatever it may be um, and, uh, and and go from it's there amazing, yeah. so what we do in our projective workshop, we, 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 we write headlines. So we work out brands that are really interesting from wherever, and we then write a story saying, imagine on the way to work today, you read a headline that says that uh, Virgin is joining up with, uh, with Tesla, and uh, they're going to launch a new, a new travel company. What do you think that travel company is going to be? Well, that's a very exciting travel oh, company, because Virgin are doing galactic trips you've got you've got you've got Tesla that That's he wants to go to Mars. Ideas. Uh, you know. <laughs> so it throws up a whole load of ideas about that you can achieve those things with virtual reality it's about living in a dream world and all that and of course we do different ones as well and then we go to the guys well which ones do you think are the biggest threat to the business you're in and I promise you 90% of the guys around the room are running it are all sitting with folded arms like this going, well, well I don't know, I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. And I go, guys, guys, don't worry because we can go into that space. It, it doesn't exist. So it's all right. about breaking out and thinking 
differently and, and having the courage to do it. So that's a great exercise to do, all right? And then, of course, you have to put your plan together. So you have to, you have to do your vision, and your vision is about the goals you want to achieve. That's really simple. So I want to be a millionaire. Brilliant. How do you want to be a millionaire? Slightly more difficult. Right. So do you want to do it by robbing a bank? Probably not. Do you want to do it by having a charity? Probably. What is the charity for? There's the creative thought. And so it goes on. So it's about being clear about what you want and then being clear that you define what those things are. And it's basically goals, which are really easy things to do, and purpose that's really difficult to do. But if you can get those two things together, you then bounce it off people around, you test it with everybody, some people will hate it because they go to default position. Oh, that won't work. That's Indeed. not going to happen. Digital camera, ah, no chance of that. Yeah. You know, end of a company. Um, and so, you, so you go on and, and, and do that. So that's another sort of exercise that you you start to build. Um, I'm a visual person. Okay. Um, I have a defect. Um, my defect is I'm dyslexic. So it's not a gift. It's actually a defect. But what it does is it makes me look at things in a slightly different way. And I'm quite visual, so therefore, as a result, I always use images. But it doesn't matter. You can use sound, you can do mime. There's a whole load of ways you can express ideas and, and do all that sort of stuff. And then when you get it right, of course, you then start producing you know, quite outstanding ideas and things that, that, that change the world. And I think I've been lucky enough to be part of teams that have done quite a lot of that. So, so that's, that's the positive. And we're doing it now with companies in the universities and uh, exactly. like to do it with the guys out there. So if you want to come up with some ideas and stuff, don't be shy. I mean, send it in. You know, We think all ideas are good. So don't, don't even think for a moment we won't help you. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing, Neil, I wanted to uh, tell our viewers uh, that you know, we would like to uh, you know, invite you guys uh, as a in a live audience situation where yeah, you can ask brilliant. questions from Neil uh, and maybe get some answers, maybe share your business idea, then Neil can come up with some yeah. uh, good I strategies yeah. and be more interactive as, an, as a live audience. Uh, so we are trying to plan that out. Just uh, comment below and uh, uh, drop a message on Facebook. We are on Facebook and we are on, um, or you can just comment down below, uh, even after the show. Uh, and Neil, uh, we are going to send all the links that, uh, yeah. that people could connect to you. Yeah, with pleasure, yeah. And, you know, always drop a message to Neil. That Neil, Neil is always helpful. And uh, as our post three uh, guys say, uh, Neil goes above and beyond uh, to help people out, help businesses out. Uh, and with that, uh, we are going to go to a short break. And uh, uh, we'll see you in two minutes. Yeah, some questions. With some questions. Good. Cool.
Okay, so we are back uh, with another question. So I'm afraid this is going to be uh, the last question that we'll uh, get to take because of uh, the time restrictions, of course. So uh, Julieta, thank you for your questions. You've been like brilliant uh, uh, in this uh, in this particular time period. I think within 30 minutes she was asking so many questions. So yeah. yeah. So the question is, I believe this uh, is actually a thought. I believe uh, dyslexia to be a gift. I believe it can allow you to be creative in ways others cannot. What, yeah. what are your thoughts, Neil? Well, yeah, funny enough, um, there was a fantastic program. If you go on to um, the BBC, um, BBC streaming services, there's a whole documentary on this with academics from Durham University and all the rest of it, and there's a whole load of debate about dyslexia. And, and the premise is that dyslexia is a gift and all that sort of stuff. And, and I, you might have heard a little bit earlier that I said it, it, it isn't a gift, it's actually a default. But what's interesting about default, which is a word I seem to be using quite a lot, this, yes. is, in, this is in a different way, is the fact, more of a fault rather than a default, it's a fault. And as a, as a result of that, you have to do things differently because you can't do them like everybody else. And that in itself makes you do things and achieve things I mean, Richard Branson's probably one of the most dyslexic people I've ever met in my life. You know, he cannot really read. Um, and yet, look at what he does. Look at, look at the ideas that he has. Oh, so I yeah. think what happens is, with that fault, you then compensate for it, which then makes you look at the world in a completely different way. Whereas if you're, everything's working well, you process well, you put everything down logistically, logically, whatever, you become a much more rational person going forward and you become more acceptable, you get good marks, you go to degrees, uh, you get degrees, and then you do possibly more administrative, wrong word, but more uh, sort of even work than people that, like myself and others that are dyslexic that are having to find a way. And, and I think you just develop different ways of doing it. But I think what I would say is that if you're dyslexic or not, it's still the ability to believe in something and do something in a different way, I think is a really important thing for the future of mankind. Because if we did everything the same and we accepted everything to be right or wrong, then we're going to be in trouble. So we've all got to push ourselves, yeah? No, none more so than myself. Right. But I didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the other thing, Neil, you know, like, uh, when talking about creative ideas and creative idea generation, uh, so for me, I'm a musician as well, as you know. So for me to, comp for me to compose, uh, start composing a, a music track, it starts after 12. So for me, there's a timeline. Yeah. So I can't compose a soundtrack in, maybe in the early in the morning. Mm -hmm. So likewise, is, is there a way, is there a pe people should under understand their strong points, isn't it? They should yeah. understand your body. Yeah. Sometimes some people might be really creative in the mornings. Mm. Sometimes, sometimes people will be might be creative in the evenings yeah. or midnight. Midnight is my time. Yeah. So, uh, don't you think we have to understand those uh, those no, it, qualities? It's, or it's, it's, it's really fascinating you say that. And yeah. For the whole of my life, I wake up at three in the morning every morning, right. and between three, four, and five, something around that time. Right. Um, whatever I've been working on, whatever's in my mind, whatever's happened now, will find its way through to me at three in the morning. And I'll wake up with an answer to it. It's almost like it's, it's, it's I think what happens is you, your mind has time to rest, and then the important things in the day come through. And when you're always looking for angles and different ways of doing things, that's the time it is. And I think what you're talking about with your creativity, it's when it's calm, the day is done, you can perhaps have a glass of wine or whatever it may be that relaxes you, and then you can start to think about stuff and, 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 and take the feeds of the day. And so creativity is not robotic. You, you don't have to keep on writing. Some people do that. You know, Dahl used to write 70,000 words a day, you know, so, and he's very successful. But, but generally, it, it's, if you just sit, if you just have a doze, if you just you know, chill out, um, often, often that gives you the right way. So yeah. I think it's a very good point you make. But I think if you force it, it won't happen. But yeah. you have to be aware and then allow those things to go. And it's all these games that are just getting you to look at things in a slightly different angle. Yes, sir. Talking With about the, the, thing, the point that you made about uh, if you force it, it's going to be re really you know, hard for you yeah. to be creative. Because I remember there was a, a timeline, a very short time period that I had to make a music track. So when you, then you're you know, like kind of 
you're, you're, you're pushing yourself. Yes. Then you feel like, you know, okay, I didn't make a really good track. Yeah. Or I could have done better. Yeah. And then you think about it and then just completely forget about the whole thing. You have a shower and then while, while you're having a shower, you get a, an, an amazing uh, tune into your head. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's, that's what you said, like, it's so true. Like, yeah. you can't force it out. You had to let it just, you know, come into yeah, your mind, Yeah, there's, there's two types of creative. I mean, I've worked as a creative director in some of the biggest agencies, well, one of the biggest agencies in the world. And, and, and what was quite apparent to me, working with various creative souls, they're different types of creative souls. You, you do have these guys that have this ability to just pluck something out of the air. But you also get guys that are creative, and they, they have a similar methodology, and they just adapt it along the way. And there's nothing right or wrong with either way. It's just they are they are different, you right? Know? Yeah. And so again, where's where's the angle? Where where's the music? Where's the sound coming from? Where's the inspiration coming from? You know, right. and and that means you've got to be receptive and open and try things, and of course fail. So, you know, failure is a good thing in creative world, and it I'm good at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone has failed. I, I have failed a lot. <laughs> so it's like a learning process, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, um, with that thought, uh, I'm afraid uh, uh, our time has passed now. So uh, and we apologize for the delay. We had some technical issues yeah, as yeah. Uh, we were talking about before before we started. Um, uh, so what I want you all to do is uh, just comment below as to uh, how the show is. Give us your feedback and uh, let us know how to improve the show. And uh, as I told you before, if you if you have some suggestions as to what are the names you can think of for the show, just uh, drop a comment and we can look at it and maybe just come up with a name. You guys can help us to be creative, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, uh, and the other thing is we, we are trying to bring back Neil, um, as I told you, uh, uh, into a live audience kind of situation where uh, we'll be live streaming this uh, with a live audience. And uh, just comment below, uh, keep in touch, subscribe to our channels, uh, uh, like our uh, Facebook channel or our Instagram channel and we'll keep you posted as to when it's going to happen. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, getting Neil back on the show uh, and help you out even more uh, with some different uh, thoughts. Good. And uh, thank you very much, Neil, for coming. My pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you yeah. here as usual. And um, yes, thank you very much and uh, we'll see you. I don't think we, we are doing a show next week, but we'll keep you informed. And uh, just, yeah. I'll keep, we'll keep you updated. And thank you again, Neil. Cool. And have an amazing night, guys. <laughs>